three shows that blew your mind and that this is as a as a spectator uh, uh, fan. Yeah. You know, all these questions are completely impossible to answer. Give, but, give it a go, Neil. <laughs> there's, there's just so many to choose from. It depends. Absolutely. You know, yeah. what, what, what kind of... Yeah, anyway. Yeah, okay. But I did decide. But the first one, they're all like gigs from when I was much younger. So I guess music just had a way more powerful effect I guess in your in your teens and early twenties, it's just this massive, huge, powerful thing. Mm. Um, the first the first one is Lungfish. Yeah, the Discord Records band, and I, uh, you know, I'm a great fan of that band. I think they're amazing. I love their repetition and like their cosmic lyrics and their presentation and everything. It's amazing. But um, but yeah, when I when I was eighteen me and friends from college, we organized a gig for them in Preston. So it was the first gig that I'd ever put on and, and it was lungfish. So this is definitely one of those, you know, big, memorable, unforgettable, life-changing gigs. Because not only was I seeing this amazing band, they were on tour with Circus Lupus as well, another Discord band, they were on tour together. So not only was I seeing these two bands, um, me and my mates were organizing it and just like, we were just kids, you know, we we're 18. And the whole experience was just amazing that we made it happen, that it was a success. And then the bands were all staying with me and my friend's parents because, you know, we all live with our parents. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it was an experience for them as well, which... You know, at the time, I didn't think anything of, but since then, and having been in their position when I'm on tour and staying at some kid's house who lives at home, then it's like, yeah, this is what it must have been like for them. So it was kind of nice, but they were all very sweet. And, you know, it, 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 was, it was a great exchange. And yeah, the gig was a success that we packed the place out. We had like this band Dead Wrong, who were a DIY band, at the time and then a local like death metal band called Hecatomb who were on the bill and they seemed to draw like a massive crowd and and a lot of which left after they played it was that really old school kind of like we're only here to see out our band you know yeah. we're supporting our yeah. friends we're going to pay full price we're not going to watch anything else yeah it's fine you know I I I was like that's cool we, we've met the guarantee of the touring band, like the, the pressure's off, you know, we can pay for the PA. Awesome. Uh, so, so yeah, that, that all worked out, but a, a really, a, you know, a really amazing, memorable thing. Um, the next day as well, is that a few of the bands stayed at my mum's house, you know, where I lived and I had a drum kit set up there and a little amp and, um, it was Ace, the guitarist from Lungfish. He he asked me if I wanted to have a jam. So oh. I was like, yep, I reckon so. <laughs> so wow. he went and got his guitar and a lead out of the van and plugged in. And then the guitarist from Circus Lupus like grabbed an amp and a guitar as well. So, you know, I was just loving it. And, and just having, you know, just jamming on some riffs. And Daniel Higgs, the singer of Lungfish, was just sat sat at the kit at the uh, like the dining room table just kind of like clicking his fingers oh and amazing th that experience yeah. is completely you know burned into my memory just like it's because i was you know i was just freaking out inside and just like this is amazing you know yeah like yeah my favorite people in my favorite bands and here i am i'm getting to like jam with them that's amazing um so yeah that that one goes down on, on the list of memorable and exceptional life changes for sure. And um, do, do you have a couple more or should, I mean, we can... Yeah. Um, the next one would be Mud Honey at, um, at the Manchester International. Um, so that would have, that would have predated the Lungfish was 1992. Um, Mud Honey was, 1989 in Manchester 
and I'd heard them on John Peel. It was just kind of like, you know, I think probably before grunge was even coined, it mm. was, they were just kind of coming through. Um, you know, Sub Pop was still like a really cool underground label. And, uh, and yeah, we found out about the gig probably reading The Enemy or something or Sounds maybe, probably Sounds. And um, yeah, a group, me, me and three others, a group of mates from school, all like 15 years old, just took the train over to Manchester. And like, now that I think about it, how on earth did we get into a gig? I don't really know. They must have had a really low bar on, on like age and IDs and things. Did you, did you have a beard at the time that kind of <laughs> accentuated your age? <laughs> I mean, I've always been tall, but like, you know, but yeah, that, that was amazing because the super fuzz big muff was out and I think the first album had just come out. Maybe I'm getting that confused, but they, that's the set anyway. Cause I remember it so well. Mm. So it was like all those early songs, which I love. And I'd never seen a band with like so much energy and um, and and just intensity, and like they were just going for it, you know. They were just fresh faced and and like just just like flinging themselves around and just playing this amazing music. And like I guess it was my introduction to like fuzzed out guitars and like you know maybe a little bit of a swingy sort of drum sound as well. Mm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, me and my friends were just down the front, you know, and like, just, just, just loving it, just absorbed and just like, just digging it so much. And then afterwards, we realized that we'd missed our train home. So we spent the night um, on Piccadilly Station so we could get the train home at like 6.15 in the morning or something. Oh, I've done that so before, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. So it's just a memorable, memorable adventure all around. Bit of everything, yeah um yeah and then the the other one would be seeing elvin jones play live he's one of my favorite drummers mm. um i saw him in at ronnie scott's in birmingham in 2001 so he would have been in his early 70s wow and he, he was fronting the elvin jones jazz machine and i think there were i think it was like a five piece with like bass piano trombone um maybe trumpet and then elvin it was amazing like it was all seated, just tables, very, you know, very civilized. And uh, we had a table right at the front and the drums were set up right at the front as well. So like, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't a great distance between our heads and like Elvin's bass drum. Oh. So it was, it was just about as intimate as you could want, could hope for. I guess and, so. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and just to see someone like that, who's a complete legend and an innovator, just to see it close up and to see to see him playing with like so much sort of fire and vitality and still like searching creatively as well it was it was like inspiring kind of beyond belief really thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this short video you can catch the full episode linked in the bottom left hand corner at the end of this video or you can find the link in the description below. I need your support. I'm a very new podcast. I only have around 100 subs or so. So if you could please like this video and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, that will help push my videos up in the algorithm and expand the reach of my videos. So yeah, thanks for that and uh, see you next time.